Okay, good. Um, so, uh, tutoring for the test tomorrow. I'm going to write the big concepts on the board, and then we're going to like branch off. Come on, branch off. You guys are going to, you guys are going to tell me what on this list you want me to go over again. Okay. So we have opportunity cost. And the idea of like scarcity. Uh, we have uh, the circular flow model. You know, that's the money and resources and good services that are exchanged in like that circle. Uh, we have the idea of our PPF curve. And to branch off the PPF curve, we're going to like talk about how like choices are shown, opportunity costs that we see is shown, shown uh, and, and like long run economic growth. Okay, um, sticking to the graph. Uh, uh, the business cycle, expansion peak recession trough, uh, talking about expansion of the peaks. Of course, we go into our uh, our economic indicators, GDP, and to branch off that, GDP versus like GNP, the equations, um, like what they included, the idea of double count. Um, and then there's inflation and everything that goes with that. There's like the idea of real versus nominal. There's the CPI. There's the PPI. There is the like uh, the Fisher equation. There is a uh, there is like interest rates. And like the idea of real and nominal interest rates that kind of goes along with the Fisher equation. There is, of course, the the unemployment, um, whether that be the four types, uh, the 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 uh, what's it called the equations <coughs> to solve for unemployment. Um, what's called things I'm missing? Uh, the different types of economies. It's going to be like, here's a picture with some dots on the graph, and it's all like, which of the following explanations would be shown, like moving from point A to point B, or which of the following would shift the curve inwards, or whatever. So obviously the shifts uh, versus movements. Okay, so do you want me to go over the shifts versus movements? Yes. Yes, okay. So that's one. What are six other things that you want to go over? Business cycle. GDP. All of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's counting two. One, two, three, four. Um, inflation. Okay. And I think maybe only one more. Unemployment. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so basically, um, okay, <laughs> let's go, let's do something, the, the easiest one first, the business cycle. That one is super easy. Um, that is like expansion, peak, recession, trough. Expansion, peak, recession, and trough. What is that measuring? What is the thing that is going up and down? Don't say the economy. GDP. GDP. It is not inflation. It is not unemployment. I mean, those things are tied to it. But expansion, like the definition of expansion, is a period of rising GDP. And then recession is a period of falling GDP. So this is about GDP changing. Of course, during expansion, what is happening with prices? What is happening with inflation? Is inflation going up or down as the economy grows? Well, 
Dallas. It has to be one. Dallas. Wait, what? Said, what's happening with prices if the economy is growing? Prices are going up. Okay? Everyone has money to spend, and businesses know that. And so what do they do? They raise the prices. So during expansion, yes, inflation is going up. During a recession, prices fall. Inflation falls. <clears throat> but what is going up during a period of recession? <coughs> Unemployment. Unemployment is high, yet it is low during expansion. Unemployment is low during expansion. So that's the business cycle, really. What's another way to say recession? Contraction. Ooh. It probably is exactly the same as the letters of recession. Okay, <laughs> let's see what else was on our list. We just did the business cycle. Fantastic. Let's do PPF shifts versus movements. The production possibilities frontier curve looks like this. We have capital goods. It doesn't matter which axis. And we have consumer goods. What is the name of this shape of the curve? What type of PPF curve is this? An increasing opportunity cost curve. It is an increasing curve because it's um, the opportunity cost is increasing. The more capital goods you want, the more and more consumer goods you're going to have to give up, and by <coughs> lots of consumer goods, you're going to have to give up more and more and more capital goods. So this is an increasing curve. Uh, what's the other one? And that one is like a straight line where the opportunity cost is constant. What are two goods that would have a constant PPF curve between them? Goods that chips and legs. Well, lays the type of chip. Chips and mashed potatoes. You know that like chips are made of potatoes. Potato potatoes. Wedges and, chips. and bread is not made of potatoes. I love potato wedges. But I see yeah, you can both grow them in a field, so maybe the root of it one's a root. Okay. Uh, the constant similar <laughs> FOPs and then different FOPs. Yes. So the idea of a shift in a movement. If I want to move that's going from one point to another. What would cause that to happen? From one point well if it could change the amount of um like the amount of what they're producing from of one thing versus the other. Yeah. Using the same amount of resources. Yes. Yeah, like if the resources the are the same, yet I decide I instead of <laughs> making this many capital goods, I want to make this many consumer goods, but our resources, so it's from one point to another because of different choices. Maybe someone said different demand. Who said that? Angela, you said different demand. That's another way to say a change of a <coughs> choice. Um, because <coughs> choices change. So our example our example is what's going to happen next week to our PPF curve if interest rates fall today. If interest rates fall today, what is that going to affect? Capital goods, consumer goods, right now, what do you think would be affected? Like the first immediate thing businesses might do. Why capital? And why, why are they related? Olivia? No, I thought we were going to produce capital goods. So what? 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 Okay, so I said interest are falling. Oh, falling. Can I do less? It's a bit buying more. Who's buying more of what? Businesses are buying more capital goods because they take out loans to do so. And if interest rates fall, are they going to take out more or less loans? More loans to buy what? Okay, you're not going to buy taking a loan to buy a pizza. Pizza You're going to say hello to buy a pizza oven. Like, I'm renting this lamp. No. Um, <laughs> how sad is your life? Um, okay. But you were like, example, interest rates fall. In short run, 
there will be a movement going from where to where. Like at first they were making more pieces and consumer goods, and now if inventories are falling, they're going to decide to make more the ovens or cap ovens. Okay, so if this rate's full, in the short run, um, businesses choose to make more capital goods. Pablo has a question. I know. I was just... So what does it say before change? Before change. Uh, choices? Oh. Clearly, that's an I, oh. and that's another C. Uh. Choices, because choices oh. change. So, right now, interest rates fall. How do we show a movement from one side of the PPF curve to the other? What? A dot. A dot. How am I going to know which one is your first, which one is your second? A, B. A and B, one and two, whatever you like. Okay? So, let's say that we were here at A. Now we're going to be producing more pizza ovens at B. So in the short run, we're going to go from A to B. But what's going to happen to our economy in the long run if they keep producing capital goods, they keep making more and more pizza ovens? So still the same example. What is their direction? Which direction? Outward. Yes. Why? <coughs> why do you produce more pizza ovens than capital goods? Will the economy shift? outward in the long run. Yeah, You're making the resources. And <coughs> more capital. I mean, it's literally in the name. The, the FOP is the thing that should the PPF curve is a change of land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. So shifters or shifts happen with a change in the factors of production. And if businesses choose like they did before, if they choose to produce more capital. In the long run, it's the LR, the entire economy grows. The entire economy grows and shifts to the right. So A to B is a movement, but that caused a shift going from B to like it doesn't matter where you are, just see shift outwards. Does anyone have any questions about the idea of movements versus shifts? Uh, let me make one thing clear. If I wrote it here, but then no one like said anything. Uh, I mean, I guess you talked about the curves. But the idea of long-run economic growth, like the economy growing and being a bigger economy than ever before, Long run growth is this. That is long run growth. What does this show us? Increase, there's a shift outward, an increase in capital goods, and an increase of resources. Does that have anything to do with GDP? No. Just because people are buying more things does not mean GD does not mean we are we can produce more things. People could buy a whole bunch. It doesn't change like they can buy all my cookies that I make. That does not mean I have more ingredients to make cookies. Because you get crowd that like, oh there's no like wheat what's in the flour. Yeah. Um, and there's no more whatever. I can't make any more, but we want them. So long enough economic growth is this. It is not this. It is not that. And my S is going to toll today. Wow. <laughs> okay. Long growth of this, it is not GDP going up. So if they say that there's a question of the next few days, which the following increases our longer economic growth, and you say more consumer goods are being sold, or there's lots of government spent, no. No, no, no. Wrong. At the piece, land, labor, capital, because that, what if like prices are going up yeah. and everyone's buying the exact same amount, but our GDP is going up because the prices of these things are, but that's not economic growth. Just because things are more expensive and people are spending more because it's more expensive does not mean our economy's getting better. 
Hang on. Well, like, if you're producing more than these are more, like more consumption. Don't assume. If you're producing more, does that mean people are buying it? No. Think of all the stuff sitting on shelves that are produced. People don't want them because they're just not good. Or it's like, if I, you know, it's the idea is like, if I build it, they will come. Not necessarily. If you build something, if you build like a PT cruiser, that doesn't mean people are going to buy it. It's not a car. Okay, let's talk about GDP. Now that we've said it's not GDP, let's talk about GDP. GDP. Okay, this is the equation. Uh, for those of you that are on, uh, watching this on the computer, you're not fine because I can just. This is not a, it's not a camera. Oh, uh, C plus I plus G plus XN. What is XN? It's net exports, export. but what's in it? Net. Exports minus imports. Exports minus imports. Okay. What's the other equation for GDP? I don't know. Um, labor wages. Rent plus wage plus interest plus. Labor. Oh. No. All right. Uh, so. Profit. Profit. Yeah. That's also GDP. Remember, y equals GDP. R what? Y equals tax. Right. Nope. I don't know. Just don't confuse Okay. So you can add up GDP in any of those ways. Uh, it's either all of our consumer spending, business spending, government spending, uh, what we buy from foreigners minus what they buy from us. Or if you add up all the rent that is paid, wages that are paid, interest that is paid, <laughs> profit that is paid to entrepreneurs, then you're going to also get GDP. This one's the most commonly used one. Um, that's the one people will care most about, really. Uh, Which was the more accurate? Well, the same. Well, we, 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 they should. You're counting it, right? Um, <coughs> Of course, this is like you know, 200 divided by 90, and you're like, eh, <laughs> 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 it might be different. Okay, um, uh, what does GDP not include? Black taxes. Black market. Black market. Okay, those of you that are like, I still don't get black market. You buy drugs, that's the black market. You buy a, a pirated DVD, that's a black black market. Um, if you buy it legally, then it's fine. And you like live in Colorado and you're like, I have a card or whatever. But it's like, if, yeah, you can't buy, you buy like a, I bought a lion or something off the black market. You can't buy a tiger. Um, okay, black market, non market, that's different. Unemployed. No, it's not the unemployed. They have jobs. They're just not jobs that necessarily you might. Well, like under age people would count. Like under 16. Yeah. Uh, or like, you know, a lot of people would be paid in cash, then you're probably not going to claim that. Um, if <laughs> you are a babysitter, if you like. Car wash. What? A stripper. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. If, if it's like, you get yes. cash. Yeah, no, no, I'd say yes is a no. I'm sorry, that was confusing. Um, <laughs> yes, she's going to claim her income. Or he. Or he. Is when 
what percentage of people are either seasonally, virtually, or structurally unemployed? Three to five. Four to six percent. <laughs> Four to six percent. And that is the natural rate of unemployment. We naturally have those three. It's when we are above six percent that we have the last one, which is cyclical unemployment. Maybe they're laid off or because of some sort of economic downturn, basically a recession. <laughs>
it's less than what it should be. And so the nominal number is going to be less than real. This will, this will help you out on multiple choice questions. You just look at like, is it less than 100? Is it greater than 100? Is it equal to 100? And that'll help you eliminate choices. Like if you had today's quiz and you're like, okay, it's 90, that's less than 100. My number has to be bigger. My answer has to be bigger. Well, you can get rid, well, I'll leave it you could have gotten rid of some of them if uh, okay. <laughs> CPI is greater than 100, uh, there is inflation, and that way nominal, that number is inflated. That nominal number is too big. There is inflation in it. That, that number is going to be bigger than real. <coughs> Your answer should be smaller than the numerator, than the nominal. And that's the way you remember it. Nominal goes on the numerator. Here, if that helps. Okay. And what about the interest, the inflation rate? The inflation percentage? It's no. No. New minus old. New CPI minus old CPI over old CPI times 100 is going to give you your inflation percentage. There'll be numbers that are easy, like. Two plus two. Four. No. Thirty. It's gonna be around hundred CPI. Winston, have you have you seen that line that's like what's nine plus ten? Like oh twenty one. <laughs> 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 That's a spider. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so close to it, just not. His name is Mike. Yeah, not the Mike. What is the one? Um, does anyone have, we've got three minutes left. Does anyone know? Like, I'm looking at whatevers. You have a textbook, yes? Uh, yeah. Yes? Okay. I'm going to quickly look at my textbook and show you. If you were a page number that has information on it, what page number would you be? Let's see. Ten. No, no, no. <laughs> That's pretty <funny>. Hey. Um, <laughs> at the very beginning of any book, like a textbook is gonna have like some sort of like <coughs> index. Oh no. Or a table of contents or something. Yes. Okay, so probably <laughs> all of chapter one. Some of chapter two, and all of chapter three, four, eight, five, four, twenty-seven. One, two, and twenty-seven. We're getting chapters for micro. Yeah, I think our class begins. Okay. Be there or don't no fail either way. Be square. Don't be square. You know why? Be there. Be square. Because you're not around. Bye. Watching the video. Bye. Say goodbye, Susie.